Hey there, Louis Acabellis here. Thanks for stopping by. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can add a calendar to a SharePoint online site. Now, before we get started, if you find this tutorial helpful, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. Now let's go ahead and let's get started. Now, if you're watching this video, then you might already be aware that Microsoft actually deprecated the calendar web part in SharePoint Online. So if you've ever used the calendar web part in an earlier version of SharePoint, perhaps SharePoint 2016 or even SharePoint 2010, that web part is no longer available in SharePoint Online. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at how to create a SharePoint Online list and then apply a calendar view to that list so that it will appear as a calendar so that you can actually insert items uh, in that calendar view and make that calendar view the default view. Now, as you can see in the screenshot, this is a screenshot of a SharePoint online list with a calendar view applied to it. And it almost looks like the SharePoint calendar web parts from earlier versions of SharePoint, and it functions the exact same for all intents and purposes. So let's go ahead and let's have a look at how to do this. All right, now you can see here that I have a SharePoint online list called Office Days. Now specifically, this SharePoint list will be used to track the days in which employees will be working in the office. So you can see that I have a person type column called employee name, I have two date type columns, one called start date and one called end date. Now in order to convert a SharePoint online list to a calendar using a calendar view, it's very important that you have a date type column. Now you can always use a default column like created or modified by, but for context, it makes more sense if you're using something like a start date, an end date, you know, a task start date or project start date, etc. Now, what you want to do in order to make this a calendar is you want to go ahead and click on all items and you want to click on create new view. Now you can see here in this create view menu that you have this option that says calendar. So I'm going to go ahead and click it and I am also going to give this view a name and I'm just going to go ahead and call this calendar view. And next you're being prompted to select the start date on your calendar and the end date. Now what this represents is because we are going to display items in this list as items in a calendar, we need to be able to specify two date points, okay? So in this case, you can see by default, it is just specifying end date as the start and end date. So that is really important because if you only have one date column in your list that you want to use, you can actually set that as your start and end date. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and click on my start date here and I'm going to set it to start date. And I'm now going to click on my end date and I'm going to change this to end date. Now again, in this case, because we're using custom columns, if we create an item that has a start and end date that spans multiple days, because we've set these two dates here, that is that is going to show that item spanning those multiple dates on the calendar. So really important uh, to consider when you're building out this calendar view. Next, you can check whether you wanna make this a public view. Now, checking this means that other people that have access to this site will also be able to access this calendar view and to manipulate data in this list from that calendar view. Now, I will go ahead and click more options, and you can see here that the only other option you have is the title of items on the calendar. Now, if you click on this drop down, what this is going to show you is this is going to show you a list of columns that exist in this list. Now, by default, it is saying that it's going to show on the actual calendar whatever value is populated in that default title column. What I'm going to do is I'm now gonna set this to employee name. So when we actually add data to this list, you're going to see the employee's name show up on the calendar uh, for items that are created. Now the last step is to go ahead and click create. And you can see here that we have our calendar view here. Now, if I wanted to go ahead and add an item to this list, what I could do is I could just use my standard new button for my SharePoint online list and fill out the form. Now I'll go ahead and do that here. So I'll just plug in a start date and I will select May 23rd and I will select an end date and I'll also select May 23rd. And I'm gonna go ahead and select myself as the employee and I'm gonna go ahead and click save. 
and you can see here that this item has been created. So you can see my name, Monday, May 23rd, and it shows up in the calendar. Okay, now if I wanna edit this item, I can just click on it and I can click edit and I can come back into the um, item properties form and I can go ahead and manipulate the data that way. Now I can also add items to this list just by clicking into one of these dates. So you'll see as I hover my cursor over a specific date, that there is this little plus sign. And if I click on that, again, it's just going to bring me back into this new item view. Now I'll just go ahead and click cancel. And what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and click out of the filter menu so I can make this a little bit bigger. So you can see here that I have my SharePoint online calendar. Now, really important, if you wanna set the calendar view as the default for this list, you want to click on the drop down here, which is the switch view options drop down, and you want to go ahead and click set current view as default. And that is going to make sure that whenever you navigate back to this list, that it defaults to the calendar view. So I've navigated to my homepage, I'm going to click on office days. And you can see here because I set this view as the default, it's automatically going to bring me into this calendar. So that's how to create the calendar view. Next, what I'm going to show you is how you can embed this calendar on a different page of your SharePoint online site. So perhaps you wanna put this on your SharePoint site collection homepage or a different page. You can actually go ahead and do that and I'm gonna show you how you can do that right now. All right, now you can see that I've navigated back to the landing page for this SharePoint online site collection. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and add the calendar to this page. And the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and click on the edit button. This is going to allow you to edit the elements that exist on this page. And for demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna scroll right to the bottom and I am going to hover my cursor uh, over this section here. And you can see as I do that, there's this plus sign that says add a new web part in column one. I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And what I'm going to do is I am going to search for and select list. This is going to display a list of all of the SharePoint online lists that exist on the site collection. So you can see here that office days list that we just created. I'm gonna go ahead and select this. And you can see here that it will now embed that SharePoint online list in that calendar view directly on my page. Now to commit this change, I'll click on republish and I'll just click on republish again. And when I scroll up, you can see here that I'm now still on my homepage. And when I scroll down, I can see that list. I can close out of my filter to make it a little bit bigger. And again, I can go ahead and just add items by clicking on the new button and it's going to bring me back into um, the list itself. Now what's also cool about the SharePoint online list calendar view is you can also click on the events pane and that's just going to bring up a list of the events that are coming up or that are stored on your particular list. So that's how to add a calendar to a SharePoint online site and then to embed it on a page. Next, I'm gonna close out the tutorial by showing you how you can also embed this calendar in a team in Microsoft Teams. All right, now you can see here that I'm in Microsoft Teams and I am in the general channel of my finance team. Now to add that calendar to a channel of a team, you want to go ahead and click on the add a tab button. And in the search box, you want to search for and select SharePoint. So you can see I just type SharePoint in the search menu and I'll go ahead and click on SharePoint. And this is going to bring up all of the elements that exist on the SharePoint online site that serves as the back end for the team that you're in. So again, I'm in the finance team. Here I'm gonna go ahead and click on the lists tab and this will display a list of the SharePoint list that exists on that site. And you can see here the office days list we just created. I'm gonna go ahead and select it and I'm gonna go ahead and click save. And you can see here that it has added that SharePoint online list with the calendar view as a tab in this team. And again, from here, I can go ahead and just click on the plus sign and add items to this calendar uh, and easily see and manipulate the data right from Microsoft Teams. Now, this is a very important note. This approach to adding a calendar to a SharePoint online site is really useful for just tracking uh, data that includes 
date attributes. This does not necessarily sync with Outlook um, like the calendar web parts from earlier versions of SharePoint. So using this approach, you're not gonna be able to send invitations into this list and automatically sync that to your Outlook calendar. So that's it. In this tutorial, I showed you how you could add a calendar to a SharePoint online site. We also looked at how to embed that calendar on a page of a SharePoint online site, and then also how to embed it in the channel of a team in Microsoft Teams. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please hit that thumbs up below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date on the latest tutorials that I publish. I'm Louis Acabellas. Thanks for stopping by. Talk soon.